Hi there. Today is Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion, he is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name, he is holy. The king is mighty, he loves justice. You have established equity in Jacob and you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, he is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God. Though you punish their misdeeds, exalt the Lord, our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord, our God, is holy. Um, this psalm is one of a few um, psalms that are called enthronement psalms. Um, the psalm emphasises at different points that God is king, that God reigns. You can see in verse one, it starts with the Lord reigns. And then in uh, verse four, it goes on to say the king is mighty. It is an enthronement psalm. And um, and there's loads, absolutely loads packed in these nine verses. Um but there is one thing that stands out most, and that is the amount of times that it talks about God being holy. In verse three, let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. Verse um, five, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. And verse nine, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain for the Lord our God is holy. Holy is a word that is either has a negative connotation or has a quite a ritualistic connotation. It is often a word that is used that can um, maybe invoke guilt or make you feel inadequate. And for some of you, you will have really, really wrestled with what, what God being holy means and what it means for, for us to be holy. And um, and I, I suppose this psalm is, is just brings that into, into forefront again. Um, God's holiness is God's distinctiveness, I guess. God's holiness um, sets him apart. That's what holy means, to be set apart. Um, God being holy is nothing to do with us at all. It is God's character, it is, it is his nature, God just is holy. And um, and I think our nature as humans is that we can forget that God is is holy just by him, his very nature. And actually our nature is that we try to bring God down to our level, that we try to make him fit into our lives as we want. And this psalm, I think, causes us to ask quite some, a couple of, of quite key questions. Um, the, the verse one says, the Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. Verse five goes on to say that, that our God is, is an awesome God, that his name is an awesome name, that he is holy. And so the first thing that this psalm, I guess, causes me to ask the question and, and to pray about is um, where in my life, where in our lives, are we trying to grasp that power, trying to grasp that control that actually is God? God, um, by his nature, is is all powerful. He is, he reigns. We, 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 we are to tremble in front of him. He is, he is big, he is mighty, he is king, he is holy. Um, and I think often in my life, I try to control a lot. I try to bring God down to my level. I try to bring him into my life. And so a helpful question that often I ask myself, which is what in my life is taking the highest place at the minute? Because that can often reflect what's going on in my heart. So the first question is, um, where in our lives do we need to give back God um, back in the driving seat, allowing him to be king? And the, the second question that this causes me to, to ask about is, um, <clears throat> is what is spoken about from verse six onwards. 
about Moses and Aaron and um, and then goes on in verse eight to say, our Lord, our God, you answered them. You were you were to Israel a forgiving God. Um, it talks about um, that actually part of God's character and his holiness is that he is a God that is perfect in justice. Um, it talks about in, in verse four, the king is mighty. He loves justice. He has established equity. His very nature, his holiness is part of that. He is perfectly just and perfectly merciful that his grace is beyond is beyond measure. And, 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 and as we know that we can access through Jesus. And so I guess the question, the second question that I, that I want to ask today is, um, where, so I guess the first one is, where do we need to be reminded that God is powerful, that he is bigger than anything that, that we control? And the second is, where do we need to know that God is really intimately um, involved in, in our lives and to be reminded that he isn't disinterested and he isn't distant, that he is really close? Um, so that all powerful, but that incredibly close God. He is the one whose beauty, whose greatness, whose goodness, whose grace is totally indescribable. And he is totally close to us. So that's the two things that I'm going to be reflecting on today. And I invite you to join me too. Goodbye.